We're live. Awesome. Today is going to be a good day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's Mama Magic Live. Going through and just having a look at some of the questions that have already been sent through. So, uh, nice welcome to Shayla. Hi, Dash. Um, Val. I see lots of people joining now. Welcome to today's Mama Magic Live. It's a new week. Uh, and today we come to you live at 4 p.m. We have a, a very busy new mom who's going to be chatting to us today, so we have to adjust our time schedule accordingly. Um, but I'm glad that you guys could tune in. My name is Warren. I'm the brand director here at Mom Magic, a father of two, um, working from home, homeschooling. Uh, we're in it just like the rest of you are. And Mom Magic is here at the moment just to make sure that you are you stay informed, that uh, to help you through your parenting journey with everything that you might need during the stage. It can't be easy having a child. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for me, especially um, having kids. And uh, I think during this time that the world is going through all these changes, all these restrictions, all these levels and lockdowns and it's so much harder. So we want to be a place of information, a place of a great source for everybody to make sure that you're well taken care of and we've got the right experts, advices and products to help you through your parenting journey. Um, today we're going to be having a chat with a new mom and maybe dad even. We never know, maybe the baby will be joining us as well to understand what their journey is like uh, during lockdown. What's it been like for them? Um, what's it been like to have a newborn baby during this time? Hello, family blog. Um, how does anyone even remember what it's like being the beginning of the week? Yeah, I know. I think the only way I know that it's the beginning of the week is because we get notifications from the school to say this is what needs to happen. So uh, that's definitely a reminder. Um, so I know, you know, before you would hear carte blanche on a Sunday evening, for those of you who, who watched and you'd kind of get those reminiscence that tomorrow is Monday. Uh, but life has taken on a whole new journey. I see our guest has joined us this morning, uh, this afternoon, sorry. So uh, bear with me. I'm going to quick do a quick introduction um, for them and then they, I'm going to uh, invite them to this chat. Uh, we're chatting this morning to... Uh, uh, Aldicia Johnson, she's a content creator, YouTube vlogger, a businesswoman. She's a new, uh, her and her husband, um, Andrew Johnson, are the newborn, uh, new parents. And uh, we're going to be chatting to him this, morning, this afternoon just about what that's like. Um, so if you've got any questions, please send them in. Um, let's see if they are ready to join us. Um, so let's see if there's any, they have to put their request in yet. Otherwise, I'm going to... Uh, invite them through. Um, I think it's so important to be able to chat to new parents. I think the challenges are so different. When I lost my kid, uh, my baby girl is now three years old already, and um, that's quite a challenge. So uh, please send your questions. Hello, Aldisha, how are you? Hi, I'm very good, and how are you? I'm very, very good. Am I pronouncing your name correctly, right? Yes, you did. Okay, that's awesome. I was kind of been practicing all afternoon, um, just making sure I get that right. Because I've become quite a fan, actually, um, of you guys. I've been watching watching your content, and once you once you start going through it, um, I think people will thoroughly enjoy. Um, but for everybody out there who doesn't know who you are, they don't know Andrew, Andrew, and they don't know the baby. Just uh, give us a brief brief introduction in terms of who you are um, and what life is like for you today. Um, yeah, my name is Aldeisha, and I'm married to Andrew. So I'm actually from South Africa and Andrew's from Australia. Um, my background from Limpopo, I'm half baby, half vendor. So Andrew and I met on Tinder and <laughs> five years ago, and we've been married this year. It's gonna be two year anniversary, our wedding anniversary. And oh, awesome. we have a son, a beautiful son, whose name is Nolan. He is um, six weeks and a few days old. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, <laughs> I think that is so exciting. You know, I think um, I was I started watching your channel on YouTube, and um, you got everything back from the Le Le negotiations, and you, you talk about your your entire journey. And I think it's so beautiful to watch. Uh, you had a beautiful wedding day. Um, it's and you you to watch your your journey unfold as a couple has been really. I, I've loved that. And I've been, oh, I love the Q&A sessions that you guys have done. You really kind of opened up your lives 
online um, as, as a couple, but also as, as new parents now. Um, are you feeling like, very, do you feel very vulnerable having to, to open up your life and become what we now call influencers? Um, in the beginning when I started doing it, it's because um, I went through depression at some point where I was in a bad relationship and I tend to watch YouTube. When I watch YouTube, this couple inspired me and they made me believe in love and they made me want to do more in life. So, so I was like, if I can find the same love, I would love to share with other people so I can inspire them. So in the yep. beginning, I didn't think about it as like, I'm doing a content creator and whatever. I just wanted to share my life with people and inspire them if I can find like true love that I was looking for. So that was the initial you know, and um, then I started sharing my life. Now that we have a baby, we started doing like um, motherhood content and we started being content creators based on that. And um, uh, in the beginning when I did that, it was exciting because I'm very real. My content is very real. I don't like faking, you know, on social media. So very, I'm very real. Exactly. So when I started that, it was there was a point where it was hard because the whole journey of motherhood, um, people can be very judgmental because there's many ways to do things. There's no like not one way. So there's a time I was like, do I really want to do this or I shouldn't do this? It was very difficult. I mean, initially I'm going through the whole thing of like raising a baby and figuring out. And at the same time, I've got people judging me because I'm putting my life out there. But I was yeah. like, let me not uh, forget why I started. I've got really great support as well because I've got people that really truly love us and we've got a good relationship and it's a community and we're helping each other. So I shouldn't like let the small things of few people who are um, like saying all those negative things to, you know, to, to make me not want to continue with this journey. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to continue and I'm not going to look or concentrate on negative. I'm only going to concentrate on the positive of the whole journey. Yeah. I think, you know, I, and I think that's what I enjoy about your content that you've been putting out there is that mm -hmm. it's been very real. Um, yeah. I love the, I, what I particularly love recently was the Q&A session that you put out. Yeah. I think just because you were able to address them quite directly, I think people will ask you sometimes, sometimes very hard questions, but yeah. you were able to, um, to respond to them quite openly and very honestly um yeah. and I, I know one or two episodes um baby nolan was kind of like okay mom can you just stop because i need some attention and you'd have to stop pause the video you know feed him take care of him and then you guys would come back and continue um so it's, it's been it's been a beautiful journey to 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 watch and i'm excited to watch how this has all taken place and how this un unfolds for you guys as new parents um yeah. but I want to know, I mean, there's lots of questions that are coming in. So all the, everybody that's tuned in, um, please uh, be sure if you've got any questions to, you want to hear from a new mom, if you've got questions about what your life is going through, or you want to just understand what to expect um, when you have your newborn baby, then please feel free. Um, and I think uh, Altisha will answer you as best as she can. Others, I'm going to jump in there um, and refer you to the right resource that can assist you with that. Um, but I see that uh, there, there has been some questions that come in already and i'm gonna get starts with some of those now um one question that is what is the biggest adjustment that you've had to make in your marriage uh, now that nolan is here <laughs> um, a big question right <laughs> it, is, it is definitely i feel like uh Indra and i haven't really focused on us as couple we've just been like focusing on the baby and trying to just um get the hang of it and have a routine and just make him a priority at this point because I read some, I read a lot, and I just want to know a lot about the whole uh, being a mom. So I read somebody to say the first three months are very important, you know, for him to bond and all that. So we're just concentrating on that. There's been like a really big adjustment. Um, but at the same time, we didn't want to like just only focus on the baby and forget us totally. Because yes. we have to also be first because we were first before he was here. So we still somehow manage to still have time by watching our own series and spending little time that we can with ourselves. Yeah, but we haven't had time, like, because we're also working as well. So it's been, like, very, it's been stressful a bit, but we, yeah. we, are, getting there. we are getting there, definitely. Look, and I, and I think you've got to take it one day at a time, um, because every day is so different. You know, today might be so different to yesterday. 
Um, and, you know, when you find those moments, you've got to cher cher cherish them, whether it's an hour together or it's just a quick, you know, 15, 20 minutes to have breakfast together. But I think yeah. it's those small, those small moments that you have to really find opportunity to bond and connect um, because it, there is a person who is so dependent on both of you right now and some are probably more on you than on Andrew. Yeah. But you've got to find that balance. And at the same time, you've got to find the balance between the, between the two of you. And I think that's important. I mean, you said you're, you're, you've been married now for almost two years. Um, did you guys, I also watched your video about how, how you announced your pregnancy to him, which was hilarious. I absolutely love that. Um, yeah. Did you guys plan to have kids? And, and, how, and, and, and how, what, was, what kind of decision happened there? Yeah, we, we did plan to have kids. Um, we started planning just after we got married. We got married in 2018 December, 7th of December. So um, we got pregnant immediately when we got married and we got miscarriage in January, 2019. Uh -huh. So when we lost, it was very hard on us. And um, after that, we didn't give up on trying and we just tried. And yeah, um, it took about maybe three, four months for us to get pregnant again. So, yeah, it's something that we both wanted to have kids and we felt like we we're ready. And because um, we've known each other for five years, I mean, this year will be five years. So, yeah, both wanted, we want to have a family, a big, not a big family, but yeah, a family. family. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, you know, I, and I think that's part of, I think that's part of why people relate to you is that yeah. sense of transparency because I think to have a miscarriage is a very difficult process um, and it's a very difficult, traumatic thing to go through. And I have to share that with, I think it's people find it a very difficult thing to, to just understand and engage personally and with each other about it. But to have to share that with the world is, um, is quite a challenge. And yet yeah. at the same time, so many people um, experience that and go through that mm -hmm. same type of challenge. So mm -hmm. I think the fact that you're so open about that and, you, and you've, kind of walked through that process and here you are with the with the beautiful baby now um i think that's 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 so it shows the strength of, of you both and uh, within your in your marriage which is really really beautiful um but i mean what's it like uh, the one question we got in what is it like to hold uh, baby nolan for the very first time oh my god it was it was i don't know i can't explain it was so beautiful it was I don't know. I can't. It's just this feeling that I can't explain. But yeah, I really loved it. Yeah, he was because also he was so beautiful, and I didn't expect that because I, I'm not saying I expect to have an ugly baby. I don't mean in that way or ugly or whatever. I mean like when you know they told us we attended this antenatal classes, so they told us that when babies are born, are not like cute because they've got things on their face. You know what I mean? They're not clean yeah. or. Whatever. Nonin was kind of like, he's like, he came out all already clean or cute, already beautiful or with smooth skin. I was like, oh, and like putting them, putting him on my chest. I was like, wow, wow. He was just, he was, I, I, I can't explain the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, um, I saw the one episode um, you said to Andrew, you said, he's so cute. Um, but is he cute because he's your son or is he, is he cute because he's cute? And Andrew was just kind of like, well, he's cute. And I think it's just that idea that, you know, when you hold your own child in your hand, there's, they are so flawless. Um, and and, and that, there's this, this connection to them that uh, we love and we, we just we can't get rid of that bond. Um, so that's really, really beautiful. What is your your pregnancy journey like? How, what is what is how, what is those nine months for you like? And what did you, was it easy? Was it difficult? What did you experience? Um, I had like the easiest and best pregnancy, unfortunately. Oh wow! Oh, wow! <laughs> I know. I know. Um, I honestly loved my pregnancy. I could be pregnant again. I'll be happy. You know. <laughs> Yeah, and I didn't have stretch marks. I didn't have cravings. I ate normal like I normally eat. I, I slept well because people say they have insomnia and stuff like that. I didn't experience that. I mean, I did have a few challenges. Like the challenges like um, my changing the shoe size. I went from size 3 to size 7, 6 and 7. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's crazy. I know. And um, I was constipated, and what else? Um, I had a few challenges, but I guess I looked, I, I was more positive because I was expecting worse because a lot of people went through 
worse. But I, yeah. I felt like I was very lucky. But I feel like having Nolan, I thought Nolan was going to be like more calm baby, but he's not a calm baby like the way my pregnancy was. Because he gave me this sense of calm, this sense of being happy, this sense of being peaceful when I was pregnant. And I expected that from him, but he's kind of like a little bit the opposite. He's challenging, he's demanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, he has a question from uh, Tupile. Really wants to know how many kids do you and Andrew want? Um, it is it not too soon to be answering that question? It's okay. I'm I'm okay to answer. <laughs> so initially, um, we wanted both of us wanted three kids, and um, Andrew changed and he said no. Actually, Andrew wanted three kids. I wanted two at the beginning. Yeah. And then he changed. He wanted to have three. But now having Nolan, I think I'm okay with two. Is it one? Fine, it's two months. Unless it's after a while, I can change. He's he's really like this is the challenge. I love challenges, but Nolan yes. gives me this new challenge. That wow, yeah, yeah. And yet you'll find you'll look back on these times and and wonder how easy it was for you to overcome them. You know, I I think because it's so new and so fresh, I think everything is so different. Um, I know you guys are even mentioning just something as simple as bathing a newborn baby is not as simple for new parents as it is for someone who's, who's got a few more kids. But I mean, I've got two kids and when we had my, my, my daughter, who's the, who's the youngest, bathing her was kind of like, oh my gosh, there was this, how do I bath this little child again? And she's so small and she seems so fragile. So yeah. you never kind of get rid of those sense of fears. But you know, I'm, I'm quite sure that you will grow your family um, into into many more kids, especially if you've had pregnancies the way you've had. I think there's a lot of women out there um, who might be quite jealous at, at that fact, but I think that's I think that's beautiful. Um, there's lots of people here just talking about how beautiful your baby is, and I love your, your your the content that you put out. Um, Sashada says uh, my shoe size is as went up by one size but now it's almost three years later and we're back to a size three um so she's got done well to go back i remember when my, when my wife was pregnant um she's a size three as well but mm -hmm. she at one point my mom told me that her foot size had grown um during pregnancy and i think that was one of my biggest fears was yeah. that if her, my wife's feet grow doesn't mean we're going to get rid of all those shoes and we're going to start again so yeah anyway we, we, got, we got past that <laughs> Yeah, I have all my shoes. I actually bought like one pair of size seven and one pair of size six to wear when I was pregnant, especially for yeah. my baby shower. Um, but the rest of my shoes are size three and maybe three size four. Um, I still kept them. I'm hoping I'll go back. Yeah, I'm just hoping I'll update people if my shoe size goes down. But my mom told me also she she changed her shoe size when she was bought, she was pregnant with my brother. And it never went back with us. With us, when she was playing with us, her shoe size didn't change. Apparently, with girls, it's some people, you know. Yeah. So with my brother, her shoe size went big. And now my, my mom was size six, and she's as short as me. Okay, I'm short. I'm not tall. No. <laughs> yeah. Explains the shoe size. <laughs> Um, so tell, let's, let's take it back before we, we talk about uh, baby Nolan for, for a bit. But I mean, tell us, you've, you've had your, you had your baby shower. Um, and then a few weeks later, I mean, six weeks ago, you had um, baby Nolan. What, what was your birthing experience like? Um, it was not what I expected. Obviously, I wanted to go natural. I would have loved to give birth natural, you know. I was heartbroken when the doctor told me that... Um, because it could be dangerous to go natural at that point and the, the baby's heart rate is high and all that, the infection. So we ended up doing C-section that was not planned. And yes. um, But at the end of the day, I just like uh, thought of these words that, I mean, the best birth is a healthy baby and healthy mom. At the end of the day, I was healthy and Nolan was healthy. And yeah, um, and, and, and the doctors and the nurses, they were amazing. They took care of us and yeah, everything went well. So um, I was happy that Nolan was here because he was actually overdue for one in two days. Oh, wow. You <laughs> yeah. wait, you're waiting for him to come out. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, what's, yeah. what's it like? I mean, you, so you had a cesarean six weeks ago. Um, you, you, it's, it's been locked down for, for as long a time now. 
Um, yeah. And a lot of people want to know, um, you know, what's it like to have a newborn baby, um, have, a, have had a cesarean, um, you're stuck at home. What's that like now during lockdown? Um, I'm, maybe I'm just a positive person. Obviously, the whole pandemic, coronavirus, is a bad situation. I never thought in my whole entire life I would find myself in this situation. Um, yeah. Andrew and I are very adventurous. We love like traveling and we already we had plans the flights that we booked um you know to travel and we had to cancel because of this lockdown um it, it's really it's really sad especially for Andrew. i think i'm more of a home person i love i love being at home so i start struggling a lot Andrew is more adventurous so he was like dying not even able to run thank god um Lately, he could, like went around two days yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, was it two days ago or a day ago? I don't know. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's a hard time, but at the same time, I'm thinking it, it forces me, because I'm a hard worker, I'll be like out doing work. It forces me to be a stay at home mom, even though it was mm-hmm. not a plan, <laughs> or work from home, but like, you know, and so yes. rolling. And I'm just thinking in this way um, if we didn't have lockdown, Obviously, still Nolan wouldn't do much in terms of exploring, going out. He's still a baby, you know. It's not too bad. He doesn't know anything about going out and all, all that, you know, or traveling, you know. So it's too, it's not too bad. And I'm just praying and hoping that we'll get vaccination for this and it will we'll be over it. Because yeah, it's a scary time because you don't know, you know. Right now, our friends they didn't even have to. I mean, they didn't. They haven't met Nolan because we. Yes. Safe, you know, so it's really sad that he is he's just gonna grow around me and Andrew and the nanny, not other people. He's not gonna meet other people. It's just sad, and he's not gonna live in a normal. He this the new normal now. You know, mm. um, with the three people. Yeah, but we, I'm positive. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. It, I mean, I think it changes. It changes even how we parent because. I'm a yeah. big believer in we parents as a community and it's the people around you that are so important, not just for, for, for baby, but for your own mental health and your own support and your, your need to have a break and, you know, just that stimulants. Um, and I think a lot of moms out there are struggling. And, you know, last week in our conversations with so many different experts, so many moms are concerned about going, taking their babies for weigh-ins and um, doing their vaccinations and stuff like that. Have you and Nolan been out the house at all to, to do your yes. normal medical checkups and stuff? Mm-hmm. Um, I went out because my C-section, I got infected. So I went to the hospital, I think, twice because of the infection on my C-section. But I was scared, but I was positive, you know. And last week on Wednesday, we took Nolan for his first vaccination. Six yeah. Weeks. So also, uh, we have a good relationship with the nurse um, that did the whole vaccination. So I was just like talking to her on WhatsApp and all that. So um, she just gave us comfort that everything, they have the mask, the sanitizers, and the hospital that we went to as well, um, they have all this, you know, uh, to make sure that, you know, they've got like, uh, what do call, they, 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 they've got masks and sanitizers and they yeah, free all the precautions. Bit safe. It's not too bad, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping for the best, and they take like one person at a time and go in as well. So it's not too scary as I thought. Okay. We're hoping for the best. Yeah. Okay. Um. So he has another question that's come in. How long and has you? How long did your C-section take to heal, and has it got any better since the infection? Yeah, it's gotten better because they gave me antibiotics. I was on, on antibiotic for like is it six days? Yeah. Um, but I'm not completely healed because um, they tell you that you you heal like it takes six weeks to heal. I'm not yes. completely healed. I'm a bit uh, there's a bit this small, you know. But I'm I'm fine. I'm better than you know the first week or the second week. Yeah, because I got infection on second week. So yeah, that's not too bad. Um, I can still do. I do everything now. Like oh, maybe two weeks ago, I could do everything. You know. Yeah. yeah, in the beginning, where I was limited to a lot of stuff. Yeah. Look, I th- I think you know from my wife who's had two C sections. Um, also again because having a size three, um, and a small pelvis, and you know all these things have prevented her 
from having natural birth. Um, but I think we miss, uh, we don't realize the, the amount or the, the trauma that the body goes through during a C-section and how difficult it is for women to, to heal because it's quite a serious operation. Um, mm -hmm. It's such a, there's, there's, there's so many other things around because you're meeting your baby for the first time and dad's in the room with, in the room. So you don't necessarily see it as a serious operation, but there's a lot that happens. And I think there's a lot of healing that, needs, that the body needs to go through. And you know, you've got to look after yourself um, during this time. But at the same time, while your body's trying to recover, you've got a baby who needs you and you can't just afford to sit still and just lay on the bed. Um, but besides all that, how, how have you adjusted? Um, are, you, are you breastfeeding baby? Has that been easy? And what's life been like now having a six week old? Um, I am breastfeeding and I love it. I love breastfeeding. Oh my God, it's the best because I get to born in Poland. And yeah. um, basically, um, the C-section has, I mean, it's, it's, it's not too bad. It was bad in the beginning. And I've, I've adjusted in this parenting thing. I mean, other days are hard. I think the first two weeks of having Nolan was the most difficult, um, you know, and especially... You're trying to figure out all this and um, you get to get like when he's got, he start crying and we figured out that he's got gas. And in the beginning, I thought he got colic and I was yeah. so scared and stuff like that, you know, stressing a lot about that. But um, um, we, we figured out how to manage that and he's fine. It's just that after you figure out something, you can control something, something comes up. Like recently, we just figured out that he's got rash. And we're dealing with that. It's just yes. painful, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just like something comes up. You're like, okay, I'm done with this. Yay, he can be a, a happy baby and something comes up. Yeah, but yeah, I guess it's parenting. There's good times and there's bad times. But, so yeah. true. I saw Tashara put up earlier that, you know, parenting is the real deal. And it yeah. really is. Um, because like you say, today you're dealing with, with one thing and then tomorrow it's something else um and that's how i think you adjust um and i think every day is a new day because your challenges are so different you know um how he sleeps tonight um might not be how he slept last night um sure. how he feeding or how easy it is to burp him i saw andrew is becoming quite the burping pro uh, <laughs> so please tell him a uh, high five to him um, one of our, our midwives yesterday was or, well, last week in conversation with them. They were saying that dads just are the best uh, burpers that they have um, mm. because they can quite easily take the baby and put him over the shoulder and mm. burp without the baby trying to wriggle back down to the boob and you know continue feeding. Um, so I think we've got one thing that we that we are good at at this point. So and useful for. Um, so I'm glad to see that he's an active uh, dad. Uh, we he used a hashtag called uh, hashtag include the dad. Um, Andrew's definitely in there. So I'm I'm very yeah. very great to see that. Lots more questions coming in for you. Um, one question is, what have you done to uh, try and get your tummy back uh, from your post from post belly? Are you belly binding? Are you wrapping? Um, are you just going to kind of wait out until your your C section completely healed? What's your What's your plan around that? You used to be a model, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So this is this is a, might be a big deal for you. Um, yeah, um, I didn't really worry much about that, to be honest, because I was told that breastfeeding helps to make the uterus go back and you, the stomach to be small, which is true, actually. Um, I tried maybe to do belly band maybe once a day or twice, but I didn't <laughs> want to affect myself more. So I didn't do much belly binding, but my stomach gets really, it went bad. It's not completely what it was before yet, you know. I think when this C-section is fully healed, I already bought the belly binder. Um, oh, I can't show product. Can I show? <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> so uh, I bought this brand, obviously, it's this belly binder. This one. Oh, by Carrywell, yes. Yeah. So I bought this one. Um, I, I'm definitely going to do that. But my, my plan is to first use in in the neck they say duku what is this thing called like 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 a scarf I want yes to and you and you yes and put that baby thing on top just you know to be tight 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 yeah so i'll I'll do it probably if um maybe i'll do a video i'm not sure um like maybe show seven days of doing it or like 14 days and see the difference but right now i'm not too bothered and it's my stomach that really went 
down. I didn't do much. I just breastfed. So if you want the stomach to go down, just breastfeed. <laughs> go for it. That's that's absolutely that, that's. It's I think that's perfect. the best advice. But I think yeah. you also doing what's right for you and what you feel comfortable with, which is yeah. important. And I think you know, as much as you have got to look after baby, you've got to look after yourself. And I think many women become very conscious about that. Um, about their weight and lots of people asking about what are you doing? Um, have you lost any weight after pregnancy? I mean, it's only been six weeks. Um, yeah. But do those things concern you about what your body looks like after pregnancy? Or is it just still too soon? And this is still too new uh, for you to be worrying about? I just told myself, even when I was pregnant, that I'm not going to put pressure on myself. You know, for me, baby, it's my health and the baby's health and me taking care of the baby, it's priority. And I will make time and I need to give myself time to my body to rest and to feel completely for me to start with the whole, you know, obviously I'm trying to eat well. It's hard to yeah. eat during lockdown, you know, <laughs> but I am trying to eat well because Indra and I always had like the whole thing of eating uh, healthy during the week and then only on the weekend we can have our cheat time. So I'm still, we're still doing that. We're doing that. And mm -hmm. um, I will start taking Walk. Thank God now we can walk. Yeah. So, so no one can see the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think, but yeah, I, I, I'm not like worried about how I look. I've already lost weight. When I went to the doctor, my six week checkup last week, they said I lost about six kg. So I was, I was, before pregnancy, I was 52 or 53, I think. And when I got pregnant, or to, towards the end of the pregnancy, I was 67. I thought I was 63. The doctor said I was 67. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm not worried about the whole weight thing, like, to be honest. And besides, I'm not going anywhere. No one's seeing me. I'm at home. <laughs> that's, so, that's so good. That's yeah. so true. But I think that's what you're saying is that you had this idea of what you what your expectations were for yourself and you mm -hmm. kind of stick into that. And I think that's important is to kind of lay down your own sense of goals and priorities and you work accordingly to that. I think when you when you when you're just talking about your, your journey and um your your body image and your 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 consciousness of that, I saw lots of hearts coming out and people just loving what you're saying. Um yeah. and then with that, there was another question about what's me time? Do you have any me time where it's just time for you and you alone? And what do you do? My me time is my shower time. <laughs> <laughs> I really take time when I shower. I'm not going to lie. And I enjoy, like, that's my me time. Or sometimes before, after I shower, because uh, it will be downstairs with, with Nolan, but Nolan will be sleeping in the Moses basket. And uh, maybe I can still be on my phone a little bit after the shower, like in the bed, just a few minutes. I mean, of, you know, maybe 30 minutes or something. Just to yeah. relax a bit. Yeah, I think that's my me time. I don't really, honestly speaking, uh, I don't know if it's a mother thing or what. Um, I'm always thinking about Nolan. Even now when we do last time, I'm like, is he fine? Is he not crying? Does he need me? And stuff like that. I'm always like, right now, I could even call um Andrew to bring him now as long as I'm I'm I have him next to me I'm happy you know I don't know I need probably to change but I don't know but I just always want to be fine so I, I think you know we as Mama Magic we we want to know so much about our moms and the one thing that came out so strong when we asked a bunch of moms what do you do for me time a lot of moms particularly when lockdown started were mm -hmm. saying that their shower time is their me time a lot of moms were even saying, I get, up, I get up even earlier now during lockdown just so I can have a longer shower because yeah. then nobody will bother me. My husband is going to leave me alone and the kids are still sleeping and that's my time um, mm -hmm. because I think that's so important. And, you know, when you have a baby, your, your, your world becomes about him. Everything you're saying, you, you're thinking of him, you're, you're, you're considering him all the time. But at the same time, you've got to look after yourself and think, what are you doing? Um, for yourself and for your own mental health and just to stay connected to your friends and the world. Um, you guys said you went to antenatal classes. How did that help you in your preparation to become parents? It really, really helped us a lot. And it helped even Andrew more because I think my pregnancy brain was so real. <laughs> that stuff <sounds laughs> a lot. So Andrew remembers most of the stuff. And we also had a book, um, What to Expect When 
you expecting? And yeah. also that they wrote in that book is what we learned actually in the class. And we had an amazing, amazing teacher. Um, she's the nurse that also um, so um, I have a relationship with. We're taking Nolan into for the vaccination. And the fact that we, we had that relationship with her, we can always ask right now when it's real stuff. Because she's the one who taught us in the class. When I encounter something, I'm like, oh my God, there's this rush. I don't know what it is. Or there's not yes. like behavior. I send her a picture, I, I WhatsApp her and whatever, and she's still like in touch and she helps, you know. So, yeah, I think those classes are very, very important, especially because parenting is different from where our parents used to do parenting. It's a different whole, like, it's really different, you know. Um, so you learn a lot. You learn, you definitely learn a lot. I would really, really, I mean, advise every mom um, to be, attend those classes they are amazing probably you attended them as well right i i did actually and yeah. i found it so beneficial yeah. um i think as a dad as well i think sometimes we feel so displaced because there's so much going on with, with your body and you know you've growing this beautiful baby inside of you and we get to maybe just feel the baby kick yeah. or we get to hear what you're saying but we don't have a place or a purpose just yet you know um yeah. I always say that, you know, I could never rub my wife's feet enough or her back or console her sometimes in the way that some of her friends could. They were pregnant at the same time mm -hmm. because they understood each other on a different level. But what the classes did for me was that it gave me some sort of knowledge, um, information, power even, and confidence to find my place. When my, my, my son arrived, I knew I could find my place quite easily. I knew where I could help out. Yeah. Um, and, and that was great. Um, you know, my my son was um, he didn't bot breastfeed as easily as my daughter did. So yeah. when my daughter was there, my wife was so busy breastfeeding for like a solid year. Mm -hmm. I was so I I felt like so disconnected from her because I wasn't able to like feed her or be with her. So I could only be there for nappy changes, which is so different with a girl. Um, uh, breast or, or or kind of swaddling her or burping her. So yeah. the antenatal classes really helped. And yet the truth is that a lot of people don't go for antenatal classes. Um, a lot of them will read a book or go online. And yet I find them it's so practical and helpful um, yeah. because even like you were saying, you know, bathing your baby um, can be a challenge and you're not sure what to do. Have, because you don't have your family and stuff around you, um, have, have, your, have your parents or Andrew's parents seen the baby? Any family members actually got to meet, meet baby yet? Yeah, we were lucky that before lockdown happened, uh, Andrew's parents um, planned they were here already. So they were supposed to be here for open. Um So they came in the beginning of March, I think. Or, yeah, the 5th of March, I think. Because Nolan was expected to be born on the 11th of March. He so came on the 19th. Um, so, and my mom came. So Andrew's parents were here for like two or three weeks. Um, until the whole travel ban was happening and the whole lockdown was, it was just getting mm -hmm. bad. The coronavirus was getting bad. They had to go back to Australia. So, yeah, they got to meet Nolan and they got to spend days with Nolan. And my mom also got to come from Nabobo to visit and nice. and leave. She just came for a weekend. Yeah, so, yeah, I talked to them on WhatsApp and video call. And, yeah, so we... We are in touch. They are helping where they can help by our phone. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom family meetings. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So uh, I, there was there, there was two more questions I want to ask you. The one is um. Let me just pull it up again because I've now quickly forgotten it. Can you believe that my memory? Yeah. Um, is, is what are you most grateful for right now? Wow, I'm grateful for life and health. That's. Yeah. Just having this beautiful boy that we prayed for, that we wanted so bad. And I'm very grateful for family, for food. I'm grateful for little things, you know. Yes. Um, just makes you be grateful for the, the smallest things, you know. You're not worried about a lot of things. I mean, you're worried because you, you of the virus that what if, you know, it affects one of your family or you die or yourself. But at the same time, you're just thankful when you're still alive and you're still healthy and when you still see your loved ones and they're still healthy as well. So I'm very, very much grateful. Every day, I'm more grateful than ever. Yeah. I, I, I think um, I was saying to a friend of mine this morning on a call that during lockdown, 
I think I've become so grateful for our for the, for the basic things that we've already always had. You know, yes. our home, um, our home. I was being grateful for the time I get to spend with my kids because yeah. they're at home every day. I'm working from home, um, yeah. and it's those little things I think that we all seem to now appreciate. Um, and the one thing that lockdown has, I think, taught me, and I'd like to know what it's taught you, is that it's helped me simplify the importance of life. It's removed a lot of clutter. It's removed a lot of um, the things that were on the periphery all the time. You know, the, yeah. the, the, your time in traffic and having to rush here and do this and be there. Um, where now life is very different and it's not always convenient, but it's taught me to focus on what's present and what's around me all the time, which is my kids and my family, uh, my marriage, you know, those kind of things. What is lockdown been for you? I mean, you're a new mom, you and Andrew, Andrew's still at work. What's it like and what's it taught you? I think it taught me to, 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 to stand back and relax because as I told you, I'm very ambitious and I was having all plans and I was thinking just after giving birth, I can just go back to work and all that. Like I was always just on the go but it just taught me to just relax and just mm -hmm. be grateful and enjoy the moments you know with with with, with nolan and with angel you know and yeah I, I think yeah it taught me to appreciate even my friends more and my family more i found myself being even closer to my sister more or oh, my family because i call them more you know than ever because you just realize how how, how, how short life is, you know, and how things could just change in a blink of an eye, you know. So, yeah, I appreciate my loved ones more and, yeah, I try to keep in touch with them. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. Um, here's, a, here's a question. Um, there's lots of hearts coming in and people just loving your humbleness and your transparency. Lots of hearts coming through while you're talking. But here's a question that we got is, what advice can you give um, to first-time mommies out there? Uh, the advice that I can give to the first time mom is that um, do not be anxious. I know it's normal to be anxious, but try to know that you got this. God trusted you with that little friend for, for a reason. You you are doing a great job. And there's going to be loads and loads of advices out there. Do what is best. There's no the wrong or the right. As long as you're not doing that count. You That's know, so and, true. <laughs> Yes, because people have opinions, you'll get confused and you know, so you need to be confident in doing this motherhood thing, in, in parenting, confident but say this, I'm going to follow this, this is the way I'm doing it and if it's not working, and don't be scared, you can ask for advice, it's okay to ask for advice, but you need to have your own voice, you know, yes. Yeah, and you need to be strong. It can be, and when it's hard, it's okay to cry. It's okay to lock yourself. Oh, beautiful, up. yes. And you need to talk also to your pa partner or your family member, whoever is there to support you or your friend. You need to talk because there's certain things like I went through, like I felt like Andrew couldn't understand me if I talked to Andrew. I had to call my friend who had a child, I mean, had a one-year-old and she went through that. And she had to tell me that it's okay out there the way you are feeling. She had to that assurance and she's giving you the advices. And when you know that people are going through what you're going through and it's not like you're crazy or something, so you, you feel better and you learn from them. You know, I learned mm -hmm. a lot. And the nice thing is that there's even, like, as I said, our Instagram or our, our social media platform, it's more of a community for parenthood and for motherhood. So we have, I have a lot of people on Instagram, we talk. Some of them, they've got a six week, they tell me what the milestone or what they're experiencing. Like just having that conversation with yes. other moms, it's beautiful. So talk to people and yeah, but also know what you want and don't get confused of what you want and how you want to do your parenting. You need to be, you need to be confident in it. I, I, I think that's, that's beautiful. You know, there's so many things that you said there, but the one is that you will make mistakes along the way and you've got to be okay with that. Um, true. I think that's so, that's so true. Every day you will yes. make a mistake. <laughs> it will, yes. And don't be hard on yourself because yes. there's sometimes I'll make mistakes. I'm not, if I have bad parents, or I'll just come up. I'm not, I'm not doing it right. That was wrong. What I did was so wrong, you know, and I feel so much guilty, but it's okay. It's okay, you know. As I say, as long as you're not killing that child. <laughs> yes. And I think also, you know, we've got to be so careful that we're not comparing ourselves and our babies to yes. other people. 
um, because if their baby's sleeping through the night and your baby's not sleeping through the night, what are you doing wrong? Um, yeah. You know, they've reached this milestone. I haven't reached this milestone yet. My, I haven't lost as much weight or whatever it is. And I think you, you compare yourself to so many other people, but you've got to be confident in sure. you as a parent and in your, in your partnership with your partner that yeah. what we're doing is right for our family. Because mm. even the products that you use, I mean, I've, I've, I've loved that you've been sharing the products that you've been using and yeah. I've used Philips Avent, um, which is a, a brand that we loved uh, for mm -hmm. our kids and we trust and rely on both our kids. But it mm -hmm. doesn't work for everybody. But you've got to be okay that this is what works for you and this is what works for, for your lifestyle. Um, so I think that's really beautiful. I mean, you guys have a nanny at home as well. What's that like um, to add that into your family dynamic now? Um, and has she always been around? Um, and how is she engaging with baby? Um, in the beginning, we didn't have a stay in nanny. We had like just a helper who comes once a week. And um, having had, we gonna. It was a bit challenging because we're like, wow, we're gonna live with another person, you know, and we don't yes. know. Big challenge. Big challenge. Big yeah, change. Big challenge. Yeah, but we were lucky that we really got this lady that's very sweet and is very good with Nolan. And um, yeah, she, she's she's nice. She's a nice person. And yeah, I mean. I told myself that whether I'm going to have a nanny or not, I need to be hands-on parent. I really want to be Nolan's mom, <laughs> you know. So, But the help that she's giving, it's really making a difference. Even though I do spend most of the time with uh, Nolan or doing, um, like, you know, it's more like we are just helping each other in the house. It's not like she's Nolan's, um, she needs to take care of Nolan all day, you know. Absolutely. But, yeah, she's really making a difference. I can take a nap because she's there, you know. And now that I've started pumping milk, that's even good because now, like, right now that I'm having this live video, I know that if Nolan's hungry, there's milk in the fridge and we can give it to him. So, yeah, I don't have to worry much. So, yeah, she's been amazing. I guess it's difficult sometimes to get good nannies. Um, my friend told me some of them, they've got, like, they fired them, the tenth nanny and whatever. So, and they tell me that names change. I hope our name doesn't change. So far, so good. She's been really good. Um, yeah, I'm happy with her. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, I think it's such a... Um, I think in South Africa, we're really blessed that we, we can have um, nannies um, and help us because I think that, that help is so important as a parent. Um, yeah. I think that's what it's about. It's it's not about removing um, your, your th the fact that you're the primary parent uh, parent but it's just about the fact that you need help like you say sometimes you can go take a nap or you can continue working on the side if somebody requires something from you so i think that's what's really important um somebody is asking just about how did you form a bond with your nanny and how's that been to and how should how how do you do that create that bond with somebody who's now in your house i mean for us where we had a nanny we've had to we made sure one it just kind of set down some rules is that this is mm -hmm. our space. One is to include it, make her feel as part of our family. So soccer yeah. times, all those kind of things, you, you're part of our family. Um, so yeah. we don't want to exclude you or make you feel like you're a third party okay. in the house. But I think yeah. at the same time, it's also give her her sense of privacy and give yeah. her her own space so that when she mm -hmm. wants to go, go into her own space, she has that and she has that privacy and that she can still be her own person. You know, she can watch her stuff on tv she can, she's still a normal being just because she's living in your house doesn't mean that we have control over 24 7 but what's that been like for you and how have you bonded with your nanny um what happened is that um my background is um i've i've, I've done casting and a modeling agency that run that so i do have i know how to cast people i interviewed a couple of people so i have to go with my dad to know that this is the right person for us and for my child um and luckily she was referred to us by someone that we know um where we live so it was very easy also to try um so andrew are you okay so andrew's just coming in sorry that's okay <laughs> tell him to come and say hi we, there was a question earlier about where is Andrew? Hello, Andrew. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> hey, thanks, thanks. Nice to see you as well. <laughs> and, what, have you been up, what have you been up to? And, and just a quick question for you. What, yeah. What's it like being a new dad? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a mixture of um, uh, tired.
sadness uh, and sleep deprivation and and then uh, absolute love and joy. It's um, it's yeah, it's difficult to explain until you've been in. I think I think that's a really <laughs> honest answer because I, I I'll I'll be honest. I think a father of two um, and my kids are six and three. I don't think you really get over the tiredness. I think you just get used to it slightly. Um, yeah. It becomes a way of life. Um, but I agree that this bonding that's there for the two of you is um, between you and your baby is quite surreal. It's not something that you've ever experienced before, I'm sure. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's mm -hmm. totally different. And, and, Look at all the hearts coming now that everybody's seen Andrew. <laughs> what's that? Everybody's sending lots of hearts now that they get to see oh. what we were talking about as an active dad earlier. So that's really great to I, see. I just I just came up to let her know that Nolan Nolan has woken up and is and is crying now. So uh, <laughs> that's not a problem. We we actually almost done. But I'll I'll take two minutes of your time if you don't mind. Just sure. I mean, are you back at work now, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, I'm working. And, and, and I'm what's that been like? Yeah, um, uh, it's it's been busy and and actually yeah, quite quite hectic. So I've been doing at least a full eight hours behind the laptop every day. I worked a good portion of the weekend on something that we had to submit today. So it's, yeah, and it's, it's, it's tricky doing it in the same space as the baby because we don't have a big place here. So yeah. we're all kind of in the same living area during the day. So I've become uh, very quick at hitting the mute button on <laughs> <laughs> very strategically. <laughs> um, but, but I mean, at least, um, we're thankful that I've still got lots of work because I know at this time it's actually it's actually difficult for so many people. Absolutely. It's kind of like a, a, a trade-off where, yeah, you know, managing working at home with the baby here is tricky, but also glad that we've still got some, some income to, to help because um, uh, babies also cost money. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What's it been like? What's it been like? We were talking at Saldisha earlier about um, opening up your life onto social media, onto YouTube and Instagram and everything. And what's it been like for you to open up your life um, about your relationship? Your you having have, having a baby now? Yeah. Um, look, I think for me, um, when we started YouTube um, a few years ago. Um, it was very difficult for me and uh, I wasn't used to having like an online um, sort of following and, and engagement and, and things like that. So it, it took me a while to really to get used to it. But it, it's actually been the, um, I guess, the, the, the really positive feedback and engagement and interest that we've had from, uh, from followers that's made it actually so enjoyable and has actually just changed my view and perspective and, and experience of it altogether. I mean, we have like 90% or more of the comments and feedback that we receive is really nice and positive and it's just people who are genuinely interested and, and want to know and learn from the experience that we've gone through. And and that's, that's really, really nice, you know, and so... Um, I think now adding to that experience, you know, having having a child and and, and parenthood, um, you know, if we can help um, some people with, with our experiences, if they get enjoyment out of watching it and get some something useful out of it, whether it's you know informative or, or emotional or something like that, then you know it's it's actually become really rewarding um, for us. So now it's just. It's great, you know. We, we like it, and like I said, ninety percent of the stuff is, is is positive. You only get the odd random <laughs> um, so true. troll <laughs> uh, that comes along, which 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 you, you just learn to deal with as well, you know. With with, um, with with the negative comments to you know to just kind of laugh about it and and um, and, and make it water under the bridge. So yeah, that's that, that's about it. And to thank you so much for your time um, and to Aldisha for sharing uh, your moments and your life with us. Um, our, we know that the Mama Magic audience will continue to support you guys and follow your journey. Um, I know myself, we, we love watching the content because it's honest, it's true. Um, but I think you're also in a unique space right now where lots of parents are going through what you're going through um, and just don't have a voice or community to share that with. So thank you so much for opening up your lives, um, both as a mom and a dad. 
um, and just sharing your journey through. It's been absolutely beautiful. And for Mama Magic, we look forward to chatting to you guys again soon. Um, and uh, go and look after that cute little baby Nolan, which lots of people say he looks just like you. I don't know if you get that a lot, but if there's lots of comments coming up about baby Nolan looks just like his dad. Um, so that's really, really awesome. I've been hearing that as well, yeah. Except, except he doesn't have this horrible beard. I'm just noticing now that I've got a camera on me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I tend to agree with him because I saw, I saw the videos of you from your wedding and stuff and when you were without the beard. Um, so there's definitely a resemblance there, but I'm sure you'll grow into the beard in, in a few years' time. <laughs> yeah, in a few, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. Awesome. Thanks so much, thanks. Nolan. Thanks. Uh, Andrew, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we'll be sure to share this on our pages. It's been, uh, it's been really great and insightful, and it's been Adilcia and Andrew. Um, if you want to go check them out and follow them, they're on our Instagram pages and on Facebook. So thanks so much, and uh, all the best uh, with your parents' journey. We'll speak again very, very soon. Okay, cheers. And I'm just going to say goodbye as well. Sure. Uh, I'm just Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. We really, really appreciate it. We'll speak soon. Bye. Bye-bye.